Would it be cool to charge your electric car off of the solar panels at your house? Well, yeah, it is pretty cool, but how much solar do you actually need? Let's dive in. First, we need to answer a few questions. How many miles do you drive on average per day? How much energy does your electric car use to drive those miles each day? And number three, how much solar do we need to provide that energy for your car? So let's go back to question number one. How many miles do you drive each day on average? According to Kelly Blue Book, the average driver in the U.S. drives 37 miles per day. Uh, the best way to do this is to use your trip odometer in your car um, and do it every day for a week or a month and then get your average miles per day. And my actual average miles per day is 38, but for this video, I'm going to round it up to 40 to make the math a little easier. So now that we know how many miles we drive each day, we have to figure out how much energy do we use in driving those miles. So we have to look at kilowatts and kilowatt hours, which is how you measure energy. A kilowatt is 1000 watts of power and a kilowatt hour is one kilowatt running for one hour. Now, even though this has the word hour in it, it's not a measurement of time. OK, it's a measurement of quantity. We're going to use an analogy of some water. Um, it's not a perfect analogy, but go with me on this. OK, let's say this spigot represents one kilowatt. It's the rate of flow. This much larger pipe represents 10 kilowatts, obviously a larger rate of flow. OK, so think of the amount of water in a bucket or a container as kilowatt hours. Let's say this bucket holds 10 kilowatt hours. We put the water into it at a rate of one kilowatt. It'll take 10 hours to fill it up. If we use this larger pipe at 10 kilowatts, it'll take only one hour to fill up the 10 kilowatt hour bucket. OK, I hope that makes sense. And this screen in my car helps you estimate uh, how long it's going to take to charge at various charging rates. So at the 1.4, the, the slowest charging rate here, and look at the 75% level, it would take 17 and a half hours at 1.4 kilowatts. Okay, and at the fastest rate, which is DC fast charging, uh, 50 kilowatts, then to charge to 75% only takes 31 minutes. It's a pretty big difference. Okay, my car battery is pretty low, so that's probably about 25 kilowatt hours we're talking about putting back into the battery. Also, um, I'm using DC fast charging as an example. Very few people are going to be able to do DC fast charging at home. Okay, hopefully that helps explain uh, kilowatts and kilowatt hours. So before we jump down that little rabbit hole, we were talking about the average miles per day. And in my case, we're using 40 as the example. So how much energy measured in kilowatt hours does it take to go 40 miles? If we knew how much energy it took to drive just one mile, well, we could multiply that by the 40 miles. Now, the amount of energy to drive one mile is known as a kilowatt hour per mile, because remember, a quantity of energy is a kilowatt hour. We're going to use that to multiply up here, and that will tell us the total amount of energy that we're using each day in the car to drive around. And of course, this can vary greatly depending on the make and the model of the electric vehicle. And it can range anywhere from uh, 9 kilowatt hours to 20 kilowatt hours to drive 40 miles. Of course, the best being 9 kilowatt hours, the lower number. And the amount of energy that you actually use can be affected by the terrain, the kind of traffic that you're driving in, or even the way you drive. <laughs> This is fueleconomy.gov. I'll put the link down below also. But you can compare the efficiencies of many, many, many electric vehicles. Um, they do use a different notational system here, uh, but it's pretty easy to convert. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to do any kind of conversions from one um, system to another. Uh, but as you can see, there's just a, a bunch of vehicles in here. This is my Nissan Leaf, and I get about 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which is, uh, I think miles per kilowatt hour is familiar to people that are used to thinking as miles per gallon, and that makes sense. Uh, you do have to convert that into kilowatt hours per mile, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. So here you go. This is 4.4 
miles per kilowatt hour. When you're done with the calculations, that comes out to about 9.08 kilowatt hours per day to drive 40 miles. Okay, we started this video with three questions. How many miles do you drive per day? Well, we're going to use 40. How much energy does it take to drive those 40 miles? Well, we're going to round that up to 10 kilowatt hours. Now, how much solar? Well, you'd think it's 10 kilowatt hours, but let's take a look. When you're charging your car, you, you will use 10 to 15 percent more energy than what will actually get added to the battery. Now, this is due to a number of things, including uh, some of the power's just lost to heat, uh, some transmission loss, and some energy is used to keep your car battery at the proper temperature for charging. All right, sorry there's too much pollen on the screen. Anyway, we're at 115 volts on the charger here, and we're using 1.81 kilowatts. So this is LeafSpy. It's a third-party app, and it communicates directly with the Nissan Leafs battery. And it's seeing 1.57 kilowatts coming in instead of the 1.81. So that's a 15% loss. Okay, and now we're charging at level 2 at 240 volts. And on my EVSE, the charger here, it says 3.82 kilowatts. But over in LeafSpy... It shows 3.53, and that's a difference of 8%. This chart is going to compare the most efficient versus least efficient parts of the solar charging system. Dark blue uses the least amount of energy, and the light blue uses the most amount of energy. And we're going to say in both cases, the car is going to use 10 kilowatt hours a day to drive its 40 miles. Level 2 charging had an 8% loss, while Level 1 charging had a 15% loss. Now we're going to go to the inverter that is supplying the power to the car charger. If you're running off of the battery, your losses can be around 7%. Pretty typical. Uh, most of these things seem to run about 92-93% efficiency on the battery. On a sunny day, though, you can use the inverter's built-in charger to charge your car directly off of the solar panels that are outside with only a 2% loss because you're running at 98% efficiency that way. So the winner of the inverter round is the uh, inverter on solar at 2% over the inverter on battery at 7%. Now, you also have to include in anywhere from 1% to 3% on just all of the wiring that you use in your system. Okay, so we're going to add a 2% loss to both columns here. So next is the solar panels themselves, but solar panels only produce 70 to 80 percent of their rated power on average. OK, I've got 4.8 kilowatts of solar panels, but due to their age and the angle that they're mounted at, um, I have a lot of losses there. So I actually only get about 3.3 kilowatts at the peak of the day. The total amount of energy though, that I get each day can vary anywhere from about 5 kilowatt hours on a cloudy day to over maybe say 17 or 18 kilowatt hours on a good sunny day. So for our most efficient solar panels, we're going to go with 20% loss and with the least efficient, a 30% loss. So the winner or the most efficient um, is 13.48 kilowatt hours of solar panels. So you need 13 and a half kilowatt hours at your solar panels to put 10 kilowatt hours into your car. Bear in mind, we got this figure by using the most efficient charging and inverter settings. The loser being 16.31 kilowatt hours, it's a pretty big difference, was going through the least efficient steps all the way down. In the real world, it's probably going to be somewhere in between these two extremes. Um, you may have a very efficient uh, battery, but not a very efficient solar panel system or something like that. Now, no matter how efficient your whole system is, it's still going to take more than 10 kilowatt hours of production at your solar panels. Um, and there's just no way around that because there are losses in any system. Remember that many vehicles are going to take a lot more than 10 kilowatt hours to drive 40 miles. And the 40 miles was what we started with as an assumption. You may drive more than 40 miles a day or less than 40 miles a day. And as mentioned earlier, this is how to do the math to convert between the different electric vehicle efficiency formats. If we knew how much energy it took to drive just one mile, well, we could multiply that by the 40 miles. Now, the amount of energy to drive one mile is known as a kilowatt hour per mile because, remember, a quantity of energy is a kilowatt hour. We're going to use that to multiply up here 
And that will tell us the total amount of energy that we're using each day in the car to drive around. Unfortunately, a kilowatt hour per mile, which is what we're looking for, is not the only method of measuring an electric car's use of energy. In my Nissan Leaf here, um, what I get as a readout is 4.4 miles per kilowatt hours. And that's the inverse of what I'm looking for over here. We're going to solve this with some very simple math. Well, at least simpler than this. So what you do is take the magic number one and divide it by 4.4. And that's going to tell us that we have 0.227 kilowatt hours per mile. Now that's what we need, this 0.227. So let's just go up and multiply that. And that gives us 9.08 kilowatt hours. That's what we're using each day to drive in the car on average. Okay, so over here at fueleconomy.gov, you can see another common way to notate uh, electric vehicle energy use. They're using kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Okay, to plug this into our formula, you'll notice that they gave us kilowatt hours per 100 miles, and we need kilowatt hours per mile. It's an easy conversion. You just divide by 100, take the results, and multiply it by the number of miles that you drive in a day. That wraps it up for this video. See you in the next one.